अज्ञान तिमिरान धर्ष और प्रहलाद महाराज वॉज ही वॉज ज्ञानी भक्त हिज वेबल डीटी इज एवरीवेयर ही हैज नो एपीटाइट ही हैज नो थर्स्ट नथिंग सो वॉट कैन ही सर only prayer to him but more than him don barish maharaj was not siddha but sadha but he is more superior than gyani bhakt prahlad maharaj how shamrani will explain in brief Today they told me you asked me to speak about Ajamil, so I studied Ajamil. But your mercy, what can you speak about Amrajan Barish? She's telling that you asked her. To, huh? You asked her to study about Ajamil, but by your mercy, she will speak about Amrish. No, you know. How many? Brief, you should tell. Oh, give me. Yeah. ओमिया Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shikshi Guru Dev, Om Vishnu Pad, Astotra Sat Sri Shima, Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciplic succession and all the assembled devotees. Shri Guru Dev has ordered me to speak about Maharaj Ambarish. Who is an example of Shuddha Bhakta? He he was a Shuddha Bhakta, which means that he was situated, unlike the Lord Maharaj, who is a Mahabharat situated in Prema Bhakti, in his Vastu city. Maharaj Amrish was situated in Baba Bhakti. very pure although he was not on the level of prahlad in terms of his uh realization of the lord because he was in baba bhakti and he didn't have the spiritual body within he was always meditating on the past times of the lord externally being a great king he had his capital city in mathura which is in braj mandal so his absorption was in krishna of vrindavan one can understand the level of one's devotion by who is his istadev prahlad maharaj's istadev was lord nishringadev who is not as complete a manifestation of the lord as lord krishna who is the most complete so therefore even though prahlad maharaj has so much unlimited glory because he's ishtadev is not the perfectly complete feature of the lord the original swayam bhagavan who includes all other incarnations his devotion was as a gyani bhakta because he worshiped the lord who manifested all the opulences the omniscience the never getting tired so the istadev of amrish maharaj is krishna in vrindavan or mathura so even though he's in bhava bhakti he is in a higher level of purity because his istadev requires more um personal service 
So, being the king of the world, although he had so many worldly responsibilities, he turned over those responsibilities to his ministers, and he was personally engaged in the service of the deities. Very good manager. Savai Krishna Mana Krishna Padana Vindayo. He always engaged his mind in thinking of Krishna, his legs in walking to the temple, his hands in touching the devotees in service, his tongue in tasting Krishna prasadam, his ears in glorifying the Lord. And all of his senses were fully engaged in the Lord's service. So one of the um, aspects that Maharaj Amrish is very famous for is his observance of a codice under all conditions. Speaking of all conditions, because he was a pure devotee, he managed his kingdom in such a way that his whole kingdom was full of Krishna Bhakti. There was no severe heat, cold, enviousness, and all of his citizens practically were engaged in Krishna Bhakti and Krishna Kirtan. So everybody was happy. One day, the great sage Dravasa Rishi came to the palace of Maharaj Ambrish. It's generally expected that when a Brahmana comes to one's house, especially the house of the king, the king will immediately feed that Brahmana and give up all other considerations. But Maharaj Ambrish had a very special consideration, which was that the day before was a codice. He would observe the full codice fasting the evening before a codice, the whole day of a codice. Then the next day, first he would make sure to worship the Lord, the Brahmanas, the Vaishnavas, and then at the time of Padan, the exact right time to break the fast, he would do so. That time was not yet, so he was still fasting. But then Maharaj Durvasa Rishi came and he said, yes, I'll take some prasada, but first I'll go and bathe in the river, do some meditation. So he went to bathe in the river, and while he was gone, the time of Padan was quickly approaching. So Maharaj Amrish was thinking what to do. He had his whole council of Brahmanas, but being a pure Vaishnava, he didn't need their counsel. He knew, I have to break the fast at this particular time, otherwise my Akadasi Vrat, my vow of Akadasi, all the austerities I did in the last days will be uh, voided out. So I must take part at the right time. But at the same time, I must properly honor this Brahmana by giving him prasadam before I take. So thinking and thinking, he considered, if I serve the Brahman, then I won't go to hell. But I'll be in hell because I'll lose my bhakti. The Kadasi is an expansion of Bhakti Devi, or synonymous with Bhakti Devi. Akadasi is the ex express manifestation of Krishna. Krishna was thinking, these souls in this material world are so fallen. He even went through the hellish planets and saw the different kinds of hells in Vuravaloka, Kumbhipaka, and he was thinking, how can I save these fallen people from these disastrous hells? Yes, I shall become a titi, I shall become a day, a kadasi. And anyone who simply observes the very easy rules and regulations of a kadasi, I'll deliver him from the cycle of birth and death, and he can attain me. So knowing this, Maharaj Ambrish was thinking, Bhakti Devi will leave me, I won't be in hell, but Bhakti Devi will leave me, and I'll be in worse hell. And then, if I don't satisfy the Brahman, Surely I'll go to hell, but I'll still have my bhakti, so I'll feel like I'm in Vaikuntha. So he decided that if I take some Krishna's Charanamrita, the water that bathed the lotus feet of the Lord, that will be considered eating and not eating. So I'll be able to satisfy both. And this was confirmed also by his Brahmana counselors, that this is the right thing to do. So he took a little bit of Charanamrita. And then, some minutes later, uh, uh, Javasa Rishi came, and because he's a great mystic yogi, 
He knew in his mystic trance that Maharaj Avrish had taken the water. So being puffed up by false prestige, thinking how can this lowly Grihastha, Kshatriya, offend a great Brahmana, renunciate like me. So he immediately, in his great anger, he pulled out a dreadlock from his hair and threw it on the floor. And immediately, a very great demoness made of fire came out from his hair and immediately began to charge Maharaj Amrish. So Maharaj Amrish didn't become afraid at all. Rather, he simply folded his palms, meditating on the pastimes of Krishna, knowing, Mari Krishna Rake Ke Rake Krishna Mari Ke. Whoever Krishna wants to kill, nobody can save. And who Krishna wants to save, nobody can kill. So the Lord had already made a promise that anyone who is my pure devotee, I will protect him by my Sudarshan Chakra, my disc weapon, my ultimate weapon, which dissolves the whole universe at the time of destruction, and which is the source, as my representative, the source of all universes. So Krishna hurled his Sudarshan Chakra, and that Chakra immediately, in an instant, the fire demon was already made of fire, so I don't know how this happened, but the chakra burnt that fire demon to ashes, turned the fire to ashes, and then the Sudarshan chakra immediately started pursuing Maharaj Ambrish, I'm sorry, Dravasamuni, who went everywhere, up in the mountains, by his mystic potency, he could travel everywhere, in the air, in the sky, in the sea, on the mountains, in the caves, so he went everywhere, then he went all the way up to Brahma Loka to take shelter of Lord Brahma. And Brahma said, I can't protect you. Even I and all my associates are under the control of time. The Lord controls us, so how can we save you from his activities? Then he went to Lord Shiva, and Lord Shiva told him the same thing. We're all under the control of time. Who's under the control of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna? And Lord Shiva didn't even want him to stay there because we don't want to associate with people who are against Krishna, do we? Because then we become uh, implicated. So Lord Shiva said, if you want protection, you must go to Vishnu himself, Krishna himself. So he was able, by his mystic power, to reach the Vaikuntha planet that is in this material universe called Rama Priya Vaikuntha. And there he saw Lord Narayan. And he made an appeal that this Chatriya householder, he offended me, and now I'm in great danger from your Sudarshan Chakra. Please protect me. So the Lord said, you don't know who I am. I belong to my devotees. I'm not independent. I live in the heart of my devotee, and my devotee lives in my heart. I know no one but my devotee, and he knows no one but me. I'm not independent. So I consider that by you attempting to kill my devotee, you've attempted to kill me. You should know that austerity and knowledge, when it's in the hands of a wicked person, it serves only to destroy that wicked person. It doesn't do any good. You used your austerity, your mystic power of trance, to see that he ate before you, which he didn't. He only took water because he had to follow the part of time in my service. This was Bhakti. And when you tried to kill him, he didn't even wince. He just took shelter of me, fully dependent on me. But you, in the name of being a Brahmana, in the name of being a mystic yogi, in the name of being a renunciate, you had no faith in me. You were totally attached to your body, and you ran for your life, for protection. So how can I save you? Rather, if you want to be saved, then you should go back to earth, to Maharaj Amrish, and beg pardon from him. So this traveling throughout the universe, to Brahma Loka, to Shiva Loka, to Vishnu Loka, took one whole year. And all that time that Maharaj Amrish was uh, waiting in his palace for the return of Dravasa Rishi, he was lamenting. Oh, fie on me! 
I've committed such a great offense. On my account, this poor Brahmana has to suffer. So he was fasting, repenting, until this Brahmana would return so that he could give him prasadam. One may say that, well, he was so diligent about following the codice, and now he's fasting all year without taking anything? He's missed so many codices. But Gurudev said, actually, he's transcendental. But he was showing to follow a codice just for our sake, how important it is to follow a codice. So he was being protected by the Lord, so he was able to fast throughout the whole year. Then, now being ordered by the Lord, who was very angry at Dravasa Muni, Dravasa came and fell flat at the feet of Maharaj Amrish, who had been praying to Sudarshan Chakra, that if I have done any pious activities, if I have done any devotional service, then please cool off and don't kill this Brahmana. So immediately Sudarshan Chakra stopped its heat and the Brahmana fell flat at the feet of Maharaj Amrish to beg pardon. And Maharaj Amrish said, oh yes, at once, immediately, take all the results of my pious activities, immediately be delivered. And he gave a big feast of prasadam to Dravasa Rishi. Dravasa Rishi was able to see by the beautiful, selfless, non-vengeful activities of this pure Vaishnava, what the greatness of a devotee is. And so he himself became a devotee under his direction and flew off into the skyways glorifying Maharaj Amrish. One may ask that whenever Krishna wants to kill a demon, instantly it cuts off the head of that demon. When he wanted to kill Salva, when he wanted to kill um, Shishupal, all the demons were killed instantly. So why is it that the Sudarshan Chakra, even after one year of chasing Dravasa Rishi, how is it that he couldn't even reach him? There's two answers, many, but two answers are, one, because of the prayers of Maharaj Amrish to save him. And more importantly, he himself was a pure devotee of such a high caliber that he actually performed pastimes with uh, the gopis. He even gave benediction to Srimati Radhika that she would be able to cook with such wonderful uh, perfection that anybody who she cooked for would become invincible. And therefore, Mother Yasoda always wanted her to cook for Krishna to give him good health and protection. Also, Dravasa Muni was in the pastimes of Krishna and his coward boyfriend, which is another interesting story. So he's such a great devotee, he's actually able to associate with Krishna himself and his associates. So why did he act the way he did? Because he wanted to show the glory of Maharaj Ambarish. A real devotee isn't interested in showing his own glory, he wants to glorify the devotees. So to establish the glory of Maharaj Ambarish, who was so, showed the qualities of non-vengeance, of humility, of full dependence on the Lord, of full faith in Ekadasi, of taking the responsibility of giving everyone in his care Krishna consciousness. Like it states in the Shastra, no one should be a mother or a father or a king or a teacher unless he can save his ward from the clutches of death. So Maharaj Amrish took this responsibility. So Durvasa Rishi was assisting Maharaj Amrish in showing the glory of Akadasi. So he was able to not mind being the bad guy. So we learn from the teachings, from the life character of uh, Maharaj Amrish that even though he was situated on Baba Bhakti, which was less than Prema Bhakti, because his Istadev was Krishna himself, he was actually doing Manasi Seva and meditating in Bhav Bhakti on how he was serving the Lord internally. So this is much more intimate. And the degree of the uh, advancement 
or the affection of a devotee is based on his intimacy with the Lord. For example, yesterday we discussed Guru Tattva. So Srila Gurudev explained that even pure devotees like um, Prahlad or any other great pure devotee is only a partial guru, though they're fully perfect, Mahabhagwats, and you heard about his glories yesterday. Fully perfect, and yet they're not complete gurus because their istadev is not complete. So who is the complete and completely pure, sorry, completely perfect guru? The guru who has not only Krishna as his istadev, but the istadev of Krishna, Srimati Radhika. And therefore, somebody like our Gurudev and the gurus in the um, Rupa Nuga Guru Varga, they have lacks millions of times more power to give the highest benediction of service to Srimati Radhika to all the fallen souls. They have the most power to touch someone on the head, take away all their anarchies, and give Krishna praying. So because of Maharaj Ambrish's increased intimacy over the previous devotees, that is Sakham Dhruva and Gyani Bhakta, Prahlad Maharaj, he's called Shuddha Bhakti. Dharmaja King Chitra Ketu Maharaj. But by the mercy of Amdira Rishi and Narada Rishi, how he became a very high class of devotee. Even he wanted to serve Krishna like gopis. So, Bhakti Vedanta Giri Maharaj will explain. Come here. Yeah. In brief, we have to tell so many things. Many, many things. Okay, so Chitraketu Maharaj was the king of the whole universe and he had that. Om Gyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shivakaya Chakshirur Militamina Tasmanshi Gurave Namaha Gurave Gorachanjaya Radhika Itadaye Krishna Krishna Bhakta so Chitake, before starting, before beginning, let me offer my humble obeisance in innumerable thunderbolt pronounced Lord's feet as my beloved Gurudev, Shishiman Bhakti Danta Narayana Swami Maharaj, and to the Lord's feet of Shiva Bhakti Danta Swami Prabhupada, all our Guru Guru Bhaga, all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, as by Sanyasin, Dhanti Dhanti Sanyasin. So Shiva Guru has ordered me to talk about the Chitaketu and... No longer that I can hear. Shiva Guru has ordered me to speak about the Charitra, the, the history of King Chitraketu and Vritasura. This is a very long and complicated story. I will try to fit it all in 10 minutes. So King Chitraketu, he was the emperor of the whole world and he had thousands of queens. However, he was not happy because he could not, even though he had so many queens' wives, he could not get a male son. So then one day Angira Rishi came to him and Chitraketu, he said to Angira, um, Angira said to him, you should not be so attached. Why are you worried about the sun? You should do pure devotional service. But then King Chitaketu said, no, you know, what you say is very good, but it's not for me. I still want the sun, because who will continue my, my dynasty if I have no son? 
So then Angira Rishi relented, and, but to teach him a lesson in detachment from material desires, he said to him, okay, I will give you the benediction that you can have a son, but this son will be the cause of both great happiness and great, great distress. So King Chitraketu agreed to this condition. He said, I don't care what will happen in the future. As long as I can have this, a son, I'll be very happy. So then Angira Rishi benedicted him, and one of his queens begotten a very beautiful and talented and effulgent son. Actually, Angira Rishi took the form of this son by his mystic powers. So this son's name was uh, Harsh. Uh, Harsha Shoka Harsha, which means happiness distress. And when he grew, when, as he grew up, he became so, he was so, uh, so, so lovable, so sweet, and so intelligent that King Chitraketu became greatly attached to him and forgot everything else. Then, uh, all the other queens, they became very envious. Of the, of, the, of the queen who had the son, because uh, now King Chitraketu was completely neglecting them. And there's nothing worse than a neglected wife, a neglected woman. So then they conspired to, they said, the cause of our unhappiness is this child. So let's get rid of him. So they gave uh, uh, Shoka Harsha very strong poison and he died. So when the child, when the child died, then the queen and the king, Chitraketu, they became extremely distressed. Oh, we lost everything. We lost our beloved son. Oh, why is fate so cruel? Oh, my son, why have you left us? Fate is so cruel. They were lamenting like anything. So then Narad Rishi, who can see everything by his meditation, he appeared on the scene and he said to King Chitraketu, why are you lamenting so bitterly? What is this? said, well, I just lost my son, you know, you, you have some just mystic powers, can you bring him back to life? So Nadrishi said, okay, I'll bring him back to life, no problem, he put his hand on the, on the boy's chest or head and the boy came back to life. So the boy got up again and then, um, then Chitraketu said, oh my son, oh my son, you're alive again. But then the son, who was now gone past death and come back, he said, your son? I'm your son. Who is son? Who is father? Actually, in past lives, many lives, I have been your father and you were my son. So who is father and who is son? And then he gave him a whole instruction about the temporary nature of this material body, the eternal nature of the soul, and the duty of the soul to actually engage, our duty to actually engage in, the, in the exclusive pure bhajan to Krishna. And then he said, actually I was very happy because where I went after this body, I could do bhajan. So actually I don't want to come back. I don't want again to be the son in this kingdom, the son of these people that call, call me the, the mother and father. So the lesson here is that we should not be attached we should not uh, be too attached to our material relationships because they are temporary and the, the, the greater our attachment to these relationships of mother, father, husband, wife, child, or daughter, the greater we will suffer when we will have to separate from them. And this will inevitably come sooner or later. So we should not be so too much attached. We should be attached to Guru and Krishna. So then, then the, then the, after, when Shoka Harsha said that actually I don't want to come back to this life, I'd rather die and go to my next, destina next destination, then King Chitraketu agreed. And then after this, he, he, he um, Narad Muni gave him a mantra to worship uh, Sankarshan. And then he became a, a pure devotee, and the next life he got the body of a Gandhava and could fly in the sky. Being a devotee of Sankarshan, he became a god brother of Lord Shiva, who also worshipped Sankarshan. So then, one day, Chitraketu, in, in this, in this uh, body of a pure devotee, the Gandhava, was flying in the sky, and he saw Lord Shiva in Kailash giving Harikata. 
but he was completely naked except some snakes covering his groin. And Parvati, actually, uh, um, Sati, was sitting on his lap. And he was naked, he was embracing his wife, and he was giving Harikata. So Chitoketu laughed. He said, Oh, my friend Shiva Ji, um, this is not proper for you to give Harikata to all these rishis while you're embracing your wife in this condition. What will they think? You know, this is not proper. You are a great soul and you're an example for others. You should not, you should not do like this. So Shiva Ji, he did not take any offense because he understands the heart of his old brother and very dear friend Chitoketu. But Parvati, she got offended and she said to, um, to Chitoketu, oh, you're criticizing Lord Shiva? Even Lord Brahma and all the demigods worship him and he's worshipful for them and you're trying to instruct him, you're trying to be his guru, this is all wrong. I curse you to, be cut, to, to take birth in the body of a demon. So she cursed him in order to show us the example that we should not criticize the pure Vaishnava. But actually, um, Chitoketu was so powerful he could counteract the offense, the, the curse of Parvati. But he chose not to. He just accepted it without complaining. Why? Because he wanted to show us that he wanted to show us that we should respect the words and the orders, even the curse of Parvati, who is so dear to Lord Shiva. He considered Lord Shiva and Parvati superior to him, so he just accepted this uh, curse without complaint. And he only became a, a, a demon with the Surah for a very brief time, only to show us to show us this lesson. When he became a demon, Vrita Sura, then um, there's a whole complicated story where the demons and the, and the demigods were fighting and then the demons neglected the Guru, Shukracharya, so then the, the demigods defeated them. So then the, the, the demigods took over the, the kingdom of the, of the demons. But then Indradev was being worshipped and he got puffed up and now he's the king of the three worlds. And when Brihaspati came into the assembly, uh, Indudev said, thought, well, why, why is this Brihaspati coming here to disturb this, where well, everyone is worshipping me? And he didn't get up. So then Brihaspati understood the mind of his disciple, said he's committing an offense and he disappeared. So then the demigods, <coughs> because of that, lost their power. Because it's only by the blessings of, of Guru that we have any power to do anything. And uh, then the, the, the demons attacked attacked the, the, demigod, the demigods and took them over. Um, the, the demons were attacked by... Um, so then the, the demigods went to, uh, uh, to Narad and uh, to Narayan, Lord Narayan, and complained that they are being defeated by the demon what to do. To Lord. So then the Lord Narayan told, told them, you go to the Dutch, the Dichi Rishi. He, his bones, his body is so strong because of Vajra and austerities, you can use his bones to create a, a thunderbolt weapon, and only this weapon can defeat Brita Sura, the demon who is defeating you. Um, so uh, they um, approached the Dutch, the Dichi Rishi for his bones, and he laughed and he said, Oh, you're so selfish, just to protect yourself, you don't care about the lives of others. But anyway, he let, he let them, he made an arrangement for them to use his bones. And with this, this uh, uh, thunderbolt weapon, Lord Indra <coughs> confronted Vritasura and started fighting with him. But he could not really defeat him. But then Vritasura laughed at uh, Indra and started taunting him. And he said, you should come and kill me. What are you waiting for? You know, I don't want to stay in this body of a demon. You know, I cannot do bhajan in this, in this body of a demon. Why don't you come? And he was like, you know, he, he didn't care whether he, he, he lives or dies. Like on this occasion, he was, when Indra finally overcame him, um, Vritasura uttered four prayers, which are the, among the, the jewels of the Bhagavatam. And these four prayers are very important because it's the first time in the Bhagavatam, in this sixth canto, that there's a hint of Gopi Bhav. So the first shloka is Ahamareta Bhav Padaika Mula, Vritasura um, said, wherever I take birth, let me be 
the servant of the servant of your devotees. Only by taking shelter of your devotees can I please you. There is no other way. You must pray to Krishna in this way. Then he went to say, to say Nanaka Peshtan, Nachar Peshtan, Peshtayam. I don't want the, uh, to go to Swarga. I don't want to, to go to Brahma Loka. I don't want the kingdom of Pataloka. I don't want Bukti. I don't want, uh, want I, I do not desire yogi, mystic perfections. Um, I just want the association of your pure devotees. Um, and he ended this shloka by, by saying, Viraha Kangshe. I want to relish the mood of separation for you. So this is very interesting. You know, we, we don't like separation. As soon as we do there is this festival, we all feel deep separation. And, but Ritasura, actually Chikaketu in the body of the demon Ritasura, is teaching us that actually it is beneficial for us to relish this mood of separation. And then he went to, to say, Ajata Pakshay Vamataram Kagastanyam Yatavatsa Tadakshudarta Riyam Priva Vishitam Vishanam Manor Vinakshadi Dikshatetvam. So Ajata Pakshay Vamataram Kaga refers to a baby bird whose wings have not grown yet and he is crying for his mother. He is crying very, very eagerly for his mother. But why? Only because his anxiety, if his mother is not around, she's looking for some food for him, maybe another bird will come and eat him. So as soon as the mother comes and she is there, he stops crying for his mother. So he, he's only crying for his mother because he wants something. And then, Stanam, Stanam Yata Patsatsarak Shudarata, the baby calf is very eager for his mother to come back and feed him. And he cannot wait, and he just stretches the rope tied around his neck. And as soon as the owners let go of the rope, he, he rushes to the mother and, and takes the, the mother's meal. So we should also, like this, have eagerness for Bhagavan. But still, the calf is only eager for, for his mother because he wants to get fed, he wants the comfort of, of getting together with his mother, like this. But then the third line, Priyam Priyeva Vishutam Vishana, refers to a chaste woman whose lover is far away and she is missing him. So, um, Priyam Priyeva could mean either like a wife and a husband, but Shiva Guru that explains that it actually refers to, to a lover and a beloved, not to a husband and wife. So, a, a chaste woman, when she misses his, her lover, she does not want anything from him. She just thinks, when will we be? We can be together again, so I can serve him in all respect. She does not expect anything. Manora Vidarsha Vidrichita at one. In this in this uh, state of mind, I can always. I'm eager to I'm eager to see you. Vritasura uh, is playing to, to the law. So at this stage of uh, uh, this, when when Chipadeva Swami was uttering this shloka. He was getting a little bit into Gopi Bhav. So this is the first hymn in the Bhagavatam, the sixth count of what's to come, of Gopi Bhav. So this is a pure, this is like the mood of a pure devotee. He wants Krishna without anything in return. He just wants to serve Krishna. Just like when young men and young women, when they see each other, they're naturally attracted. Let my heart in the same way be spontaneously attracted to you. So then he ended the, the, the last shloka, Mamotsama Shloka Janeshu Satyam. So Uttama Shloka is, is Brajana Nandana Krishna. And Janeshu referred to the Jan, the Brajavasis. And Sakya means friendship, the Buddha friendship um, that you have with your devotees, that Buddha I have. Now, before he was just praying to be the servant of the servants. Then he was saying, praying for the association with your devotees. Then he was praying to be like a woman and a beloved. And now he's saying, I want this mood of friendship because truth, mood of friendship is devoid of all reverence. So actually it's like Sakya Bud and this this is like Krishna Bernard Guru Seva. Only when we serve Guru with uh, a mood of intimacy devoid of fear, we can understand, we can have some hint of how Guru Dev is serving his, or rather than his worshipping deity. And then when we, we have some understanding of the inner mood of Guru Dev, and we understand how he is worshipping his loving moods towards Krishna, 
then we can please Krishna. So this, these are some of the lessons that the Vrita Suras uh, was teaching us by uttering these shlokas and some of the lessons that um, Srimad Bhagavatam and Vrita Suras was teaching us by these pastimes and Gurudev uh, is trying to teach us through this. I've tried to recap a little bit of this uh, what I heard from Shiva Gurude, Pancha Now, we are coming in Krishna Street past times. Then was the king of the hand. His son was like a demon. He wanted to kill Bhakta. Green trees, trees, cows, especially mango and like fruitful. And he wanted to kill rishis, maharsis, cows, and cows. So Brahma Shankar with all demigods, he went to Khir Samudra and prayed Prabhu. Now, the weight of all these demons, earth cannot tolerate. Very soon you should come. Then, voice came, don't worry, I know all these things, very soon I am coming. You demigods, they should come in the dynasty of Gop and and Vishnu, Jado, and very soon I am coming. Then, <coughs> the son of Ugrasen Maharaj was comes. Once he was giving marriage to his daughter, his sister, sister Devaki to Vasudev Maharaj. In the way himself comes was became a charioter. Cha and charioter. 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 And he began to take the horses to Vasudev Maharaj's house. In the way a real boys came, the comes to whom you were with other and affection, honor and affection you are taking. Oh, the eighth womb of that <coughs> Devki will kill you. Hearing this, he left the chariot. chariot and jumped up and took one hand sword and second hand on the bread, bread of Devaki and wanted to cut at once. But anyhow, by so many tricks, Vasudev Maharaj said to him, This she will not kill you. The, Child. the children who will come from the womb of Devaki, to all I will give to you. You can kill them. Then he agreed. And he left Vasudev Devaki. In the meantime, at the time, <coughs> in the eighth Om of Devaki, in the midnight, Krishna appeared as a 16 years very young boy, four handed. Sank Chakra Gada Padma in hands and Devaki Vasudev began to pray. pray him and they prayed that you should be a small baby. A small children. Baby. In the meantime, at the same time, Nanda Baba wife Jasoda gave her birth to Krishna who was himself Swain Bhagavan. He came from the womb of 
not he appeared, he came from the womb of Mother, Mother Jasoda. And in the morning, so many Brahmins were called, they recited month and they uh, did Jat Sanskar, the nail. Uh, uh, umbilical cord cut uh, That was cut down there. And every sign of, con uh, of Krishna birth from the womb of Jasoda was there. Next day, a oh, very big Mahotsa was done there. No. So Krishna is son of Vasudev no, no. and Devaki. But he is not, he did not come from the home. Hmm? He appeared, just appeared, four-handed. But in the mother Yasoda home, from him, her, he came in a Purna Bhagavan, Madhudya Purna Bhagavan. He was Purna Par Krishna was Purnest. Complete. Super was complete. In this way, uh, but Devaki and Jasu, Vasudev Maharaj were praying that you should be a child. Then Vasudev Maharaj took Krishna in his lap and he went across Jamuna river and he went there in Jasoda house so cool. and he kept Krishna and took a Girl, baby girl. Baby girl. Uh, baby girl. Lady. Girl, baby. girl. Baby. baby. Girl. Coming from home. So Jasoda has given two children. One Krishna first and after that. Daughter. Uh, that Jogumaya. Vasudeva Maharaj took it and brought it in the jail. The iron gates and everything were as before and then Kans came and saw and took forcibly that Jogu Maya and he wanted to kill by throwing on a stone. But she went in the sky and told Oh, foolish Kans, Kans, who will kill you, has taken birth already. And then he pushed by his feet and he disappeared. went away. Then Kans thought that, oh, there is some conspiracy from Devaki. Any boy was to be born. But what became? Perhaps demigods had done something. Sarijantra. Conspiracy. Eh? Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Anyhow, he called all his demon mantri mandal. Ministers. Eh? Ministers. 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 Who were they? Chant. They were. Chanur, Mustik, Putana, Agasur, Bakasu, Tinabatasur, Sakatas, and all others. Charun, Mustik, and others. And they told, We will kill any boy in whole breath who is. Newborn. Less than 10 days, they will everywhere go and see. And Putna told that you don't worry, I am coming very soon. I have some idea that he has taken birth in Gokul. And she went there, hiding his form, demon form. And she became a very beautiful lady and went there and what became there in brief. Very brief. Very brief. 
Schönen guten Tag, alle Leute, die hier sind. Ich wünsche Ihnen in unserer Leine, alle Gäste, alle Sister und Brüder, Antis und Pans. So now we are arriving in Gokul, Putana, as we just heard, big demoness. Yeah. She could fly in the sky like a witch. She had a very long body. She could expand herself. And she was very fond of drinking the blood of small children. So also by her mystic potency. She transformed herself in a very, very attractive lady. Yeah, and she came to Gokul and she heard that there was a, a, a great festival just a few days ago and Krishna was born in the house of Nanda from Yasodamaya. So she came, knocked on the door and she was so beautiful that all were completely uh, in shock, they were not, they thought, oh, how beautiful this lady, how lovely, she must be a very kind person. Yeah. So, as she came in, she took small Krishna on her lap and wanted to give him her breast. Nobody thought anything bad about it. Yeah. They thought, oh, she wants to offer her breast and give her mother milk to small baby Krishna. So as she was uh, taking Krishna in her lap, yeah, small Krishna, baby Krishna, then Krishna, he understood, yeah, oh, here she is, Tana, she has come, trying to kill me, but I should give her some benediction. So he closed his eyes and he took her breast, and he sucked out her life as well as all the poison. Her breast was filled with poison, smeared with poison. Yeah. So Krishna, he didn't let go. Putana became so anxious. Oh, what to do? This baby is so strong. I cannot push him away. Yeah, Krishna, small baby and Putana had a strength of 100,000 elephants. She could not push Krishna away. And Krishna, he went on her breast and she expanded her body eight miles long. And Krishna had a ferry ride on her breast and he sucked out her life and Putana crashed yeah, on the road to Mathura to her brother Kamsha. Yeah, and she left her body. And this way, Krishna took care of the first demon. Man, check out the Shakripa Sylvia. Yeah,